The human brain, one of the most intricate mechanisms in the whole universe. Can we build a computer in some ways more powerful and also smaller? And what does this mysterious object have in common with the universe and colonies and social networks? Humans reason using a decimal system, digits that go from 0 to 9. It's also called a base 10 system because each digit can assume one of 10 values. Computers, in a very similar fashion, use a base 2 system, meaning that each digit can only assume one of two values, 0 or 1. We call these bits. Turns out that the binary system is just as powerful as the decimal system, meaning that each decimal number has an equivalent binary representation. Computers are built using the binary system because it makes things a lot easier, as they only have to be built to only deal with two possible values. Why am I telling you this? Well, Professor Hans Joachim Bremermann, which is probably not how you pronounce it, had the audacity to ask how many bits per second the best possible computer in the whole universe could process. It turns out that using that E equals MC squared formula from the top G himself and some really sophisticated quantum physics I'm too stupid to understand, partly because when I was two years old, I ate a whole bag of disinfectant powder. Bremerman actually figured that there is a limit. Insane. It's about 10 to the 50 bits per second per kilogram. That's a one followed by 50 zeros. For comparison, the whole internet is about 175 zettabytes, which is 175 trillion gigabytes. It sounds huge, but it's just about 10 to the 24 bits. To put it into perspective, if for every bit on the internet you had a whole other internet weighing 175 zettabytes, this ultimate computer weighing 30% less than your brain could process this whole internet or internet squared or whatever the f*** you want in 10 milliseconds. That's the blink of an eye. Literally. Now, this immensely powerful one kilogram computer could still be deconstructed into its fundamental parts. And you would find that each of the things that this computer can do could be attributed to one or more components working in a certain way. Reductionism is the belief that what I just said is true for everything. The behavior of any object in the universe can be explained by breaking it down into its constituent components. But some critics say that reductionists are a bunch of f***ing morons that have no idea what they're talking about. Emergence. It's based on the opposite belief. It's defined as the presence of behaviors or properties in an object that cannot be explained by its constituent components. You can only explain them by looking at the whole. For example, Stigmergy. It's not the STD you got during your work trip to Thailand. It's the coordination that some groups of individuals do by changing their environment. Ants, for example, do it with pheromones. If an ant finds some food, they will mark the path to it using their pheromones. Other ants will smell them and this will lead them to the food. No direct communication is involved in the whole process. Ants are also a perfect example of collective intelligence, which is another emergent trait of group collaboration. They keep livestock, aphids that they milk for honeydew, a sugary substance that they make after eating plants. Ants stroke aphids' abdomens to make them sweat that golden juice out. They also grow fungi by fertilizing them. All of this doesn't happen because they once met and decided to uh, assign tasks to each and every ant. They're just following silly instructions encoded in their genes. They're basically acting on instinct. No single ant knows what the f*** it's doing and why it's doing it. And yet, when you look at them from far enough, they're not too dissimilar from a human colony. There's a reason for that similarity. Humans can exhibit that sort of emergent group intellect as well. There's this concept of human swarms. Groups of people that are asked to answer some kind of question. Each member of the swarm doesn't know what the others are answering, and their average answer can be a great predictor for many events. For example, a scientist named Louis Rosenberg got a group of people to try and guess the order of arrival of the first four horses in a horse race. The average answer given by the swarm guessed correctly, beating 442 to 1 odds. Stanford tried a similar approach with doctors and they reduced diagnostic errors by as much as 33%. Emergence has even been used for entertainment or for weird experimental purposes. Games like Minecraft, The Sims or Dwarf Fortress have emergent behavior. The combination of their relatively simple mechanics can give rise to extremely complex scenarios. Or look at this. It's an experiment called Langdon's Ant. You have this square grid. Each cell can either be black or white. You can choose any starting configuration. Then, on a cell of this infinite plane, there is your ant. 
At every step of the simulation, if the ant is on a white square, it turns 90 degrees clockwise, it makes the square black and it moves forward. On a black square, it turns 90 degrees counterclockwise, turns the square white and it moves forward. Here's the mind-breaking sh**. It seems that, no matter the initial configuration, the ant eventually sets for this. A never-ending, looping pattern, nicknamed the highway. Or at least this is what's currently speculated, because no one has been able to mathematically, rigorously prove that this will always happen, and at the same time no one has been able to disprove it either. No one has found an initial pattern that gets the ant to do something else besides eventually do the highway forever. Consciousness is also considered to be an emergent property of life. A brain is a super intricate meat computer, but a computer, no matter how complex, is just a sophisticated electric circuit. And a lot of people are convinced that an electric circuit by itself cannot create consciousness. Societies are also super complicated. Each of us is a cog of a super organism. Software engineers use the term composability to refer to the ability to mix and match simpler systems to create something much more intricate. And this fundamental notion underpins our entire existence. Everything you do or think or own is either obtained from or contributing to a complex system. Sometimes with several layers of composition, going down to simpler and simpler components. It's f insane!